The Tomb of King Tut's Wife The Tomb of Tutankhamun was discovered in 1922 by archaeologist Howard Carter. But it's been over 100 years, and archaeologists are still trying to find the tomb of the boy pharaoh's wife, Anke Senamun. And now, finally, experts think they might be getting close. In the summer of 2017, archaeologists used radar to look at the area surrounding the tomb of Pharaoh Ai, the man who took over after Tutankhamun died in 1323 BC. The radar scans showed evidence of foundation deposits, the telltale sign that there is an undiscovered tomb nearby. This all went down in the Valley of the Monkeys, a far less famous area that's right beside the Valley of the Kings. Most of the truly famous pharaohs were buried in the Valley of the Kings, while the less powerful wound up in the Valley of the Monkeys. Legendary Egyptologist Zahi Hawass is the man behind the new investigation. He's not certain that they are going to find a tomb, but he did say if one is in the area, it almost certainly belongs to Ankesen Amun. Ankesen Amun is an enigma in the history of ancient Egypt. She was born to Pharaoh Akhenaten and Queen Nefertiti in 1350 BC, making her the half-sister of Tutankhamun. She briefly was married to her own father, and it's believed she may have even had his daughter, which would mean her daughter was her own sister all before the age of 13. Then, after the king's death, she was married to her half-brother. Brothers marrying sisters was extremely common in ancient Egypt among royalty. This wouldn't have been seen as a big deal. In fact, they may have even had a healthy marriage. Zahi Hawass said that based on their portrayal in ancient art and Anke Sinamun's image all throughout King Tut's tomb, they likely loved one another. And after King Tut's unexpected death, she likely didn't want to marry his successor. This was for a few reasons. First of all, the man who took the throne after Tutankhamun was their grandfather, Pharaoh Ai. This girl had to marry her dad, then her brother, then when they both died, she was married off to her grandfather, so you can imagine that she wasn't interested. Unfortunately, that's where everything historians know comes to a halt. Nobody knows how the queen's story ended. The truth of her fate is locked inside her tomb somewhere in the Valley of the Monkeys. But do you think researchers will ever find it? Let me know in the comments. And now for a quick break, but I promise we'll be right back. Hi everyone! You know how we like to go back and explore the ancient world on this channel, but today I have a very modern tool for you to look at. It's called Surfshark VPN, the sponsor of today's video. Thanks Surfshark! Think of it as a magic key. Can't watch a show because it's not available in your country? Surfshark lets you travel online to places where it is. Are you wondering what Surfshark? Imagine an invisibility cloak for your online adventures. It encrypts your internet traffic and hides your IP, protecting you from the villains of the internet. And you know how we value old secrets and tales? Well, Surfshark makes sure our personal online stories stay just as hidden. The best part? One Surfshark key opens many doors. It works on your computer, tablet, and phone all at once. By changing your IP address, it also allows you to access stories for other countries that you wouldn't be able to from where you are. Want to try it? Use our code Origins Explain to get Surfshark's Black Friday offer and you'll get up to six extra months free. And if you change your mind, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So go ahead, click on the link right down in the description box, give it a go, and make your online world a little bit bigger. Now let's get back to it. Did we find an Aztec emperor's tomb? Ahuitzotl is the most famous military leader of ancient Mesoamerica. He was the eighth ruler of the Aztec and the first chief of Tenochtitlan. He was largely responsible for some of the greatest military expansions of the Aztec Empire. He consolidated his power by dominating the other cities of the Aztec Triple Alliance. From the time he took the throne in 1486, Ahuitzotl was a force to be reckoned with. But like so many other amazing historical figures like Cleopatra or Alexander the Great, Ahuitzotl's final resting place is a mystery. There are no official records of how he died, but the legend is that he was hit in the head by a piece of debris during a flood in the year 1502. Whatever the case may be, he was likely buried somewhere in the city of Tenochtitlan. But if archaeologists know that, then why haven't they found his tomb? 
It's because most of Tenochtitlan is currently buried under modern Mexico City. There are accounts from Spanish priests that mention certain important burial places inside the city. However, the Spanish conquerors demolished much of Tenochtitlan and built their own structures over the ruins. They knocked down temples and built churches on top. And the city's greatest pyramid, Templo Mayor, is right in the center of Mexico City's historic district. It's surrounded on all sides by modern buildings making any archaeological work absolutely impossible. Archaeologists might be close, though. They recently uncovered a massive entranceway into a tomb that's located 15 feet beneath Templo Mayor. When they started to investigate, they found the entranceway filled with mud and water. It's been flooded for decades, maybe even centuries, which made digging really tedious and slow. Government archaeologist Leonardo López Luján said his team is excavating very slowly because of how important the discovery could be. They want to ensure that everything is investigated and recorded properly. As of right now, the researchers still don't know what's at the bottom of the tunnel. It looks like a traditional Aztec tomb, but it's really deep in the ground. They need to clear everything out while being careful and dealing with the modern structures around the dig site. The most recent radar scans have shown that there could be four vast chambers below where Luhan's team is digging. And in one of those chambers could very well be the greatest Aztec warlord who ever lived, King Ahuitzotl. And now it's shout out time. I want to give a huge thank you to Tazilla Simon for the multiple super thanks. We see you and we appreciate you. Thank you so much for your support. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. The Great Dismal Swamp The Great Dismal Swamp is an epic marshland on the southeastern border of Virginia. It's famous across the U.S. for its unique landscape. The swamp covers millions of acres of unusable marshy terrain. And millions of years ago, the whole place was completely underwater. Scientists still aren't even sure how the swamp managed to form in the first place. It's home to one of the biggest populations of black bears on the East Coast, along with plenty of other wild creatures. The Great Dismal Swamp is also home to several mysteries and legends. The swamp was named by Colonel William Byrd II in 1728. Long before the colonel showed up, Native Americans were already familiar with the swamp. The colonel described it as a horrible and foul desert with vapors infesting the air. According to the Algonquian tribes, the swamp was once the home of firebirds who snatched children and carried them back to their marshy nests. For the Chesapeake and Chowan tribes, they feared the swamp because they thought it was haunted by spirits. Plenty of men and women who have explored the swamp have seen phantom figures and heard screeches in the night. It's a grim place where even ghost hunters don't like to go. One of the biggest mysteries happened in the 1930s. A young couple moved into the region because the husband got a job surveying drainage ditches. He and his wife were attracted to the beauty of the swamp, so they didn't mind living at its border. They'd often walk through the trails and marvel at the wildlife. Then, one day, the husband was walking on his own when he discovered a small family graveyard. It looked to be from the 18th century, based on the shape of the tombstones. He wanted to show his wife, so he retraced his steps careful to remember where the graveyard was. He specifically recalled that the entrance to the graveyard was past a clump of three holly trees and the stump of a pine tree that had been split by lightning. However, when he went back with his wife, the graveyard was gone. He passed the stump and the holly trees and entered a clear glade with no sign of the graveyard. He and his wife searched for hours, but oddly enough, they never found a trace of it. This could be chalked up to simply getting lost if not for what happened after. The next day, the husband went to the local general store and talked to a man named Sam Smith about what happened. Smith laughed, then said he'd heard the same story multiple times. It seems that there's an old graveyard somewhere in the swamp that nobody has ever been able to find twice. The Urfa Man The Urfa Man is a statue that's unlike any other statue in the world. It's the oldest human-sized statue ever discovered, a piece of a lost civilization that continues to baffle scientists around the globe. The statue dates back to roughly 9,000 BC, or 11,000 years ago. 
It was recovered from a building site in the ancient town center of San Liurfa in Turkey. Excavations here have proved very complicated because of how long the ancient city was occupied. There are 11,000 years of different layers built upon each other, making archaeological work extremely difficult. Scientists have identified no less than 13 cultural levels underneath the street of modern Urfa, where the old town center is. Many of the layers are from prehistory, dated to a time before pottery was even created. The Urfa Man was found in 1993 during landscaping work, making it arguably the most important accidental find in history. This statue is about six feet tall, and it depicts the man with his hands near his waist. The figure doesn't have any feet, though it may have been designed to fit into a pedestal. One of the strangest parts of the find was that archaeologists identified fragments of obsidian that were originally fixed to its eyes. Obsidian isn't a naturally occurring material in the local region. So where in the world did it come from? Was there a trade among the ancient people living in what is now Turkey 11,000 years ago? Or did the builders come from somewhere else and bring the precious obsidian with them? Nobody knows who built the Urfa man or who the statue was meant to represent. Some think it could be the effigy of some prehistoric god but most experts believe it was constructed by the same people who built the legendary temple of Gobekli Tepe, which is within walking distance of where it was discovered. Gobekli Tepe has been hailed as the first temple ever built by humans, and some even call it the real Garden of Eden, the first place that humans ever gathered in a community. There are a lot of other theories about the statue, though. It's been suggested that the figure could have been modeled after a fertility deity, and there are those who think he was an early version of the Egyptian god Osiris. He was important enough to be placed on a pedestal above a prehistoric town, so he was definitely someone special. The Teleotic Culture The Teleotic culture of Europe is a mystery to historians. They existed on the Gymnesian islands of Mallorca and Menorca starting around 1000 BC, or perhaps a little earlier. They appeared right after the collapse of the Bronze Age, when the Sea Peoples showed up and destroyed civilizations across the Mediterranean. The Taliotic culture is considered to have been warlike because of the abundance of defensive towers that have been uncovered across the islands. They built walled towns and surrounded them with towers, presumably for defensive purposes. In the Mediterranean Sea, there is no other place with more archaeological finds per square mile than the island of Menorca. It's one of the greatest open-air museums in the world, as almost every square inch of it is part of a ruin. The island's covered in megalithic stone monuments from the Talaiotic culture, but also from the people who came before them. For about 1,000 years, there was already a prehistoric presence on the island before the new culture showed up. Archaeologists believe that near the end of the Bronze Age, there was a great disaster on the island. There may have been too many people to sustain the population, which led to instability. Then the Talaiotic showed up and took over. Archaeologists also think the same thing happened later to them. They may have grown too big to sustain themselves before realizing that they had nowhere else to go. As the Mediterranean became the dominion of Rome and Carthage, the islands were caught in the middle. By the time the Roman Empire reached its height, the Talaiotic culture had vanished. Archaeologists know they existed, and they know roughly the time that they disappeared, but they know nothing about their culture. There are tombs, temples, and cities spread out all across the two islands, but the Taliotic didn't leave behind any written records to say who they were as a people. The Dare Stone In 1587, 115 English settlers landed on Roanoke Island off the coast of North Carolina. The settlers were the second group to try and colonize the island, and the second group to fail. Shortly after their arrival, their leader, John White, returned to England to get supplies. He left his wife and their daughter behind to complete the journey. He also left his granddaughter, Virginia, the first English child ever born on American soil. John White assumed that when he returned, everyone would be right where he left him. But when he made it back three years later, everyone was gone. There was no sign of them, only a single random word carved into a tree, Croatoan. 
Almost 400 years later, Lewis Hammond showed up at Emory University in Atlanta with a rock. It was 1937, and Lewis claimed that he found the rock while looking for nuts in North Carolina. It wasn't exactly a rock as much as it was a stone slab. It was covered in faded writing, which Lewis wanted the university to decipher. But when the university deciphered the writing, they were shocked. On one side of the stone slab was a single sentence that said, Ananias Dare and Virginia went hence unto heaven, 1591. This must have been written by John's wife after their children perished. Then, on the other side of the stone slab was a brief explanation of where the settlers went after they abandoned Roanoke Island. The inscription stated that they relocated after they were attacked by Native Americans. Everyone except seven people died. But of course, the stone doesn't mention what ultimately became of those seven survivors. At the time, it seemed like the mystery was solved, but there was a lingering issue of the stone's authenticity. Haywood J. Pierce Jr. was the man who studied the stone at the university, and he found a few anomalies in the spelling. Five words were unique and that they wouldn't have been used by settlers in the 16th century. It wasn't enough to rule out the stone as a fake, but he couldn't verify it either. Suddenly, though, scholars started to get skeptical. In the end, the stone, which became known as the Dare Stone, was determined to be fake. Most English settlers used Gothic script to write in the 16th century, not Roman letters. It just didn't fit. But what if Haywood and his colleagues were wrong? In the 80 years since it was labeled a fake, a lot of scholars have come out to argue that the Dare Stone is an authentic artifact. In 2016, Ed Schrader from Brunel University determined that the script on the stone was likely made almost 500 years ago. Ed admitted that the language is still a problem, but the stone itself does contain a real inscription from the 16th century. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Elite Roman Villas in Egypt In July 2019, archaeologists reported an impressive find, Roman ruins in the historic city of Alexandria. Along with the ruins were some extremely well-preserved mosaics, considered a masterpiece of classical-era art. An Egyptian-Polish team worked together to dig at the archaeological site of Qom el Dika, which was a Roman district in the heart of the city. Qom el Dika was considered a separate city within Alexandria, where many of the Roman Egyptian elite lived, and it was famous for its gardens. The residential area dates from the 1st century to the 7th century AD. While this specific find regarding the mosaics was recently made public, excavations have been going on here since the 1960s. A number of villas that have been unearthed belong to members of the upper class, and one of them is where they found the priceless mosaic, which is 8.5 feet by 8.5 feet. The artwork was made from thousands of small tesserae, which are pieces of stones, glass, or tile, and would have been extremely expensive. The design is made up of lotus flowers framed by a pattern, and it would have been a highly decorative piece of art, plus a good conversation piece, and a good way to show off your wealth to your guests. It further shows that the art form of having circles inside squares with flowers and other elements was popular with Romans both near Rome and abroad, and that the two cultures, both Roman and Egyptian, developed together to create their own unique style that, thanks to this discovery, can still be enjoyed today. Do you like it? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Ancient Strip Mall If you think shopping at the mall is a thing of the modern age, think again. Teenagers have probably been hanging out in malls for thousands of years. In the summer of 2013, archaeologists found the ruins of a Greek portico along the Aegean Sea. A once bustling space, the seaside discovery is similar to today's strip malls, with seven rooms spread across 130 feet of ancient real estate. In the ruins, archaeologists have found the distinct architectural touches of the shop owners, along with coins, vases, and other artifacts, which are just some of the treasured items unearthed at the site. Mostly known from the 3rd to 1st century BC, earlier examples of porticos are extremely rare, making this one a truly unique find and the oldest one to date found in northern Greece. Located near Argilos, it was a place famous for gold and silver mines, so you know people had money to spend. There are more layers of ruins underground, so any day now there will be more ancient artifacts that will be revealed. Ancient Ruins in Australian Desert 
A team of archaeologists working for the Australian National University uncovered a number of tombs and artifacts of an ancient empire that was previously not known to historians. Surprise! It is located in Alice Springs, Australia by the sandstone rock formation of Uluru. This pre-colonial city dates back more than 1,500 years. While the site was first noticed on satellite pictures taken in October 2013 by ground-penetrating radar, it wasn't until more recently that the site was excavated. A number of structures were unearthed, including a royal palace, temples, water reservoirs, workshops, and dozens of houses. A small necropolis was also located outside the city where almost 300 individual tombs were found. Researchers believe the city may have once held between 20,000 and 30,000 citizens. Due to the size of the location and the number of people found there from different origins, including Polynesian and Asian individuals, researchers believe that this may have once been the capital of a vast empire that time forgot. It looks like it was occupied for 400 to 500 years, from approximately 470 to 80 AD up until the 9th century. The city seems to have flourished thanks to gold mining operations in southern Australia, and most people who lived there worked in the industry, extracting, purifying, and transforming to later trade through a vast network. It is hard to say what happened to the city, but it has changed the entire history of Australia as we know it. And now for number seven. But first, I wanted to give a big shout out to Mr. Kapovich. Hope you all have a great day too. And Pauline Ferrick Squibb. Hi, Pauline. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and join us. Egypt's Sunken City. Off the coast of the Nile Delta, marine archaeologists discovered the remains of an ancient temple, docks, and boats in the submerged city of Heraklion. Similar to the sunken city of Atlantis, which was always believed to be nothing more than a legend, Heraklion was lost to history and everyone had forgotten where it was. Tony's Heraklion, as it was known in ancient times, was a bustling port before the founding of Alexandria. It was most likely founded around the 8th century BC, but natural disasters such as earthquakes and flooding caused the city to sink into the murky Nile. Its name was almost gone from the history books until an expedition led by Frank Gaudio rediscovered the lost city. And it wasn't easy with all the murky water, it's pretty cloudy. It was once home to the temple where Cleopatra was inaugurated. Consumed by the Mediterranean Sea nearly 1,200 years ago, the city was submerged under 150 feet of water. During the excavations, the dive team found a number of new ports, which extended the map of the ancient city by about two-thirds of a mile. They also discovered a second submerged city, Canopus, as well as a cache of coins and jewelry in one of the fully excavated ancient ships found at the site. The gradual rising of sea levels and a sudden collapse of its unstable foundation is believed to be the cause of the city sliding into the sea nearly a thousand years after it was built. However, archaeologists have proven that with determination, some artifacts and treasures of long-forgotten cultures can still be unearthed for the world to enjoy. Mayan Ruins in Guatemala Archaeologists from the past used to spend years risking life and limb trekking through the jungle trying to find remains of lost civilizations taken over by nature. Now, modern technology known as LIDAR, or light detection and ranging, has helped us to uncover thousands of new structures built by the Maya, and they didn't even have to risk getting malaria. This technology was the key to a discovery in early 2018 in Guatemala that gives us insight into how big the ancient Mayan civilization really was. Archaeologist Thomas Garrison, who led the project, called it monumental and will change the way we do Maya archaeology. LIDAR fires rapid laser pulses at surfaces and creates a topographical map that scientists can then modify using the computer and strip away the jungle that has grown over the ruins. Defense systems, houses, buildings, and immense agricultural fields were discovered using this new archaeological tool. Albert Yu Min Lin, a National Geographic explorer and engineer who worked on a TV special about the find, told the New York Times that this world, which was lost to the jungle, is all of a sudden revealed in the data, and what you thought was this massively understood, studied civilization is all of a sudden brand new again. That's the power of exploration. Hidden deep within the jungle, a number of new pyramids were also discovered. What would normally take years took only a matter of days. What researchers used to think were just hills turned out to be pyramids. These discoveries have led researchers to now believe that as many as 10 million people lived in the area known as the Maya Lowlands, two or three times as many as they had previously thought. 
These exciting finds show that the Mayan civilization was much bigger and reached further than we knew. The White City of Honduras Like many ancient sites, the White City has been a legend in Honduras since the 16th century. Said to hold untold riches full of gold in a paradise just like Eden, for several centuries many explorers and adventurers were on the quest to find the legendary city. Hernán Cortés himself had many credible reports from other indigenous groups saying that the city was real. In 2016, the famed white city of legend was believed to have finally been found. Also known as the City of the Monkey Gods, the name of White City comes from the white limestone rock in the area. But one of the strange things about this settlement is that its origin is believed to be neither Maya, Aztec, nor Inca. Researchers believe it is a new culture, or perhaps even a different one that existed long before Christopher Columbus set foot in the New World. It is now known as the White City Civilization, and locals claim that when the Spanish arrived, the Indians used it as a refuge. More than 5,000 ceramic and stone artifacts and fragments were unearthed, including bowls and jars with drawings and sculptures of birds, lizards, buzzards, and a jaguar pyramid. Archaeologists believe that they were created between 1000 and 1500 AD. One of the most exciting finds was a ceremonial throne made of stone with the figure of a jaguar on it. Another strange link to the White City is that of explorer Theodore Mord, an American adventurer, journalist, and TV news producer who mounted an expedition in 1940 that was sponsored by the Museum of the American Indian, now part of the Smithsonian Institution. After his journey to the White City, he returned with thousands of artifacts from the area. However, he kept the location a secret, fearing that it might be looted. In 1954, he was sadly found hanging at his parents' home, taking the site's location with him to the grave. No one is sure if he took his own life or if it was foul play. To further the mystery surrounding Mord's expedition, conspiracy theorists believe that his death was deliberately carried out by sinister forces. A secret like that could make anybody a millionaire. Whatever the reasoning behind the tragic end to his life, mystery still surrounds this ancient place found in the jungle of Honduras. Ancient Mosque in Israel in the sands of Rahat, Israel, a 1,200-year-old mosque has been unearthed and is now being celebrated as one of the earliest known mosques in the world. The holy site was discovered when archaeologists were surveying the area before construction work was to begin on a new neighborhood. Believed to be dated to the 7th or 8th centuries, the rare find is now being called one of the oldest Islamic holy sites in the world. The discovery is quite unique in that it is a simple rectangular building, which differs greatly from the grandeur of 8th century urban mosques found in Jerusalem and in Mecca. There is no vast dome on the open-air building, and an agricultural settlement and ruins of a 5th or 6th century farm were found nearby, leading researchers to believe that simple farmers utilize this mosque. This must have been operational when Israel was still a part of the Byzantine Empire. With modern Islam thriving, it's possible this more modest ancient building will serve as an important pilgrimage site, drawing tourists from around the world and helping to improve the economy while also paying homage to the history of Islam. Underground City in Turkey with more than 200 underground cities and villages, the Cappadocia region in Turkey has long been designated a World Heritage Site. A new discovery, however, could be one of the most extraordinary finds to date. Workers were demolishing several hundred buildings to prepare for a new construction when they found a network of honeycombed cave entrances, tunnels, and hand-carved chambers. The unique labyrinth-like structure surrounded a Byzantine-era hilltop castle. Early estimates place some of the sections at around 5,000 years old, with tunnels measuring several feet wide and dozens of artifacts discovered. While the region has long been known as the home of a vast collection of underground cities and villages, this new discovery may be even bigger than the one found in Daring Kuyu, an 18-story underground city that was said to have housed around 20,000 people. With the historical objects already being preserved, researchers continue to speculate on how the structure was used. Believing that people carried agricultural products through the tunnels to the city, this find is one of the most extraordinary discoveries in the region. Megalithic Monument in Ireland During a two-week excavation in June 2019, a team of archaeologists made a discovery of one of the oldest tombs at Carrowmore in Ireland. 
Dating back to around 3600 BC, the discovery made during the excavation included circular earthen monuments that date back to between 4000 and 1500 years ago in the Bronze and Iron Ages. Archaeologists found a singular ditch surrounding a central raised area of stone. Within that area, there is a sunken space filled with black charcoal-rich soil. A number of prehistoric tools made of hard stone were also found, including scrapers and blades. The tools are thought to have been used to work animal hides, to cut and prepare food, and to make baskets and chisel bone. With no other similar sites like this found in Ireland, the extent of this exciting find will become even more evident after carbon dating is done on the objects found. Ancient Relics Under Hotel Site Construction on a new Virgin Hotel being planned in Edinburgh has been delayed by a year after the discovery of ancient relics. As building commenced, ancient structures dating back as far as the 10th century were discovered. Among the structures were many ancient objects, including drinking vessels, shoes, jewelry, tools, knives, and perhaps most gruesome, a human skull. One of the most significant urban excavations ever undertaken in Scotland, researchers have found approximately 1,000 years of archaeology on the site, with the remains of a building dating to the 10th century. They have their work cut out for them, that's for sure. Ditches and walls marking the original boundary of the city were also found. Hearths, wall panels, structural timbers and rubbish pits, as well as walls were unearthed over the course of 60 weeks of excavations. This series of buildings is said to predate the formation of the medieval town of the 12th century and offer incredible insight into the history and growth of Edinburgh. Who knows what could be lying underneath where you live right now? Thanks for watching! As you can see, there are still many exciting discoveries to be made. Which of these sites would you like to visit? And which discovery surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you tomorrow! Bye!